Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. It is Saturday morning, it's probably about half past eight and we are in for a glorious day today. Already that sun is starting to warm me up, but the sun's out, the sky is blue, and I've even got my legs out in a pair of shorts. So yes, yeah, spring definitely feels like it is here. I've had a little wander around the garden this morning and I've already found some frog spawn in a couple of the ponds. So I'll take you over there to have a little look. But I mean, today I want to get as many jobs done down here as possible because tomorrow it's meant to be a complete and a washout so the plan is to stay down here until sort of four or five o'clock and you'll probably be seeing this video on the sunday when i stay home edit it and get it out to you guys now one of the plans for today is i want to take you through some of the seeds that i'm going to be sowing in march this time of year we have absolutely loads that we can be sowing so i'll take you through a list of those and we'll also go and have a little look in the poly house because some of those seeds that we've already sown have started to germinate. And then we did have quite a few bits and pieces in there over the autumn and the winter, and all of that is springing into life, which is quite exciting. So yes, I will take you through some of that as well in just a moment. I also need to get the onions out into the ground. So from speaking to Graham in the comments below, he did say to try and not plant your onion sets when we've got a frost, because I can cause them to bolt a little bit later. So I've checked the forecast and it doesn't look like we've got any frost for the next couple of weeks so that is a job that I'd like to try and get done today. We've also got the decorative flower area. Now I've got a pear tree which I really must move because I want to place a hydrangea in its spot. Now before it starts breaking out into leaf I want to get that moved somewhere else in the garden so we're going to do that a little bit later on once the soil has warmed up a little bit and then we've got loads of nigella that has sown itself all over the show so I really want to try and dig some of that up because we had a bit of a nigella forest last year and it was a little bit too much and it did overcrowd some of those other really beautiful plants that I have in that corner. And now that that soil is starting to warm up a little bit, I am noticing that we've got some weeds starting to germinate. So we will give some of the beds a little weed over as well. As always, I'm sure there will be some other bits and bobs along the way. But first of all, you know the drill, cup of coffee. And then I think we're going to start in the poly house and I'm going to take you through some of the seeds that have germinated and some of the bits that are starting to spring back into life. So as you can see, the polyhouse bench is certainly starting to fill up. So we must find some homes for some of these little guys. We've got a mixture of seedlings, but also some bits and pieces that were in here over the autumn and the winter, which are now springing into life. But down here, we have got some seedlings, which we sowed just a couple of weeks ago. But most of this is brassicas. So we've got some cabbage here, and these are called cabisse. We've got some tender stem broccoli. In here we've got some onions, now they are only now starting to germinate, and then we've finally got some sprouts as well, and I believe they're called Igor, but yep, they are all starting to sprout into life. Now at the back here we have got two astilbes, now these do look pretty dead, but just having a little look, it does look like we've got some new growth starting to form so i will give these a bit of a water because it is a little bit dry in here and if you remember we've done some pruning of the grapevine and i stuck a few of these into some compost and already we're starting to see some of these starting to bud up so hopefully each of these will turn into a new plant and we'll either take them down to the car boot or we'll give a few of them away so next up, if we just move along here, we've got some more seedlings down here that we'd sown, but nothing seems to be coming of them just yet. So we've got the geums, and we've also got the sunflower maximiliani, or miliani, but nothing seems to be coming up in there just yet. Then at the back here, we've got some of the dogwood cuttings that we took probably in September, October time. And as you can see, we have got some new little leaves starting to form on there, which does tell me that they have definitely taken root into those pots. And as we come down, now these are just some little polyanthers that I brought at the shops and I must plant them out because they do look a little bit dead in there. And then these are some of the Alba foxgloves that I've got and these really are ready to be planted out. Now I'm thinking of sticking these either in the wildlife area, but we've also got the decorative flower garden. Both are really colorful and the white will really pop in those beds. And then at the back here, we have got another little astilbe and these are Coreopsis. And as you can see, we have got some life springing at the bottom of that plant. We've got some little house leeks or simpervermums down here. Uh, chicks and hens, I think you call them in America. And then we've got some gooseberry cuttings. They haven't yet popped into life, but it shouldn't be too long 
If not, they haven't rooted. And then at the back, we've got some roses. Now, I believe they're climbing roses, and they should be a really nice bright yellow. And I really must try and find a home for them soon. As we move along down here, we've got some more of the Coreopsis. So we split that back in September, October time, and we planted them into their own little pots, and they seem to be growing on. This is a little rose that I dug up somewhere in the garden. I think it was grown out of the bark. We have got some new life on there, so hopefully we can plant that somewhere. Got some more Simpervermums at the back there. They will be absolutely fine. I need to think about whether I want to give them away or think about another little project because we have got a few of those in the garden now. And then at the back, we have got some strawberries or pine berries. I should probably find out before I start giving them away. But look at how small those leaves are. I think they're probably going to be pine berries. In here, we did have a fuchsia. And if you can see right at the base there, it is a little bit of green growth so hopefully that should turn into something so i'm not going to throw that away just yet down here we have got some tiny little fox gloves now i didn't prick these out earlier like i did these ones so i think we might just try and pop them in some of the flower beds and see if they do come to anything this is the perennial wallflower this was looking beautiful just a couple of weeks ago but it's looking a little bit dead now so i'm going to give that a water and put that into a bigger pot because look all of those roots are starting to form out of that bottom so i think it just needs a really good drink and a little bit more nutrient and then as we move towards the end of the the bench here we have got some of the red currants so we took quite a few cuttings of these when we gave them a good cut, cut back in the autumn time and they have all started to sprout so i believe they've rooted and then down here we have just got some of the rosemary which has also taken quite nicely some of them have started to flower which i'm not too bothered about but as you can see we've got some lovely new growth on there so i think i'll probably need to prick those out in the next couple of weeks and start potting them up into their own little pots and then these are the little seedlings from just last weekend so we have got amaranthus in here we have got some sunflowers i think we've got a couple of types of poppy but yeah these are all going to be flowers which I can hopefully pop out in the wildlife area and the decorative flower garden. So I really do need to have a little bit of a sort out in here and start finding some homes. But I think I do just want to wait for that soil to warm up just a little bit more. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll start planting these guys out. And then just down in this bed, if you remember, we sowed some radish seeds and they've already germinated. They're probably one of the fastest germinating crops you can get so if you are new to gardening and you do want a quick crop i would try a radish So let's run through some of the seeds that I will be sowing throughout March. Now, to be fair, depending on how warm it does get and depending on where you are in the world, you could probably start sowing some of the April seeds towards the end of March. But this is just a small list of some of the things that I will definitely be getting into the ground. So first up, we've got something a little bit exotic. This is a melon called Amir, and it's an F1 variety. Now, I've tried years and years to try and grow a melon, but it's never happened. So I'm going to sow these today, but I am going to take these home because these do not like the cold whatsoever. And they do say that if you have a really cool climate, you should probably start these probably February time. But let's give them a go now. We're in early March, and hopefully this year might be the year for a few melons. Now I've already sown a few of these already. These are just what's down here on the left hand side, some radishes, but these can go out into normal beds around now as well. And it's always good to do successional. So I probably won't need to sow any more of these for a good two, three weeks. And then we've also got some carrots as well. And I believe it's just last weekend that we've done three lines of these in one of the raised beds. So yes, I'll probably be getting another row of these probably at the end of March, maybe even in April. As long as your soil has warmed up, you can definitely start sowing some of these carrots in your outside beds. 
absolutely love spring onions, which is why I get loads of different varieties every year. But you could start sowing some of these. Some of these are really suited to cold temperatures. So you could probably sow them towards the end of February, but March is a great time. I'll probably give it another week or so, and then we'll start doing a few rows of these out in the beds. I'd probably leave the beetroot until the end of the month when it does start to warm up just a little bit because these do not like the cold or too much wet because sometimes they do start to rot. But yeah, I will definitely be getting these out as long as the weather stays like this and it does start to warm up. Always go for the bog standard Detroit 2, but I do also love the Solyndra because it's so much easier to chop these into little discs when I pickle them. And then we've got some tasty greens here. So we've got a lettuce, frizzy de bogard or bergard. I'm not too sure, but that will be a nice leafy lettuce to have in some salads. And then we've also got a chard here. Now I would probably leave this like the beetroot towards the end of the month, as long as it starts to stay warm. It's the same family as a beetroot. And this is lovely cooked down. Either you can let the plants get really big and use these stems and roast them, or you can use the baby leaves and they are absolutely beautiful, wilted down with some garlic and some onion. Now I'd probably sow the lettuce into some plug trays before planting them out, but do go careful with the slugs and the snails because they absolutely love these plants. Now I would like to try and sow some of these today. So we've got two varieties of pea, but they are both early. So we've got Little Marvel and we've also got Oscar here. So we're gonna tr try and build a little pea frame a little bit later. I've never done too well with peas and growing supports, but we will give them a go today. And I do wanna try and get these in the ground. As you know, we've already sown lots of types of flowers, but we've got the echium here. And this actually self-seeded a few years ago on my plot. And I've never seen the bees go so crazy for a plant before. So I definitely want some of these, especially over in the wildlife area. And then over here, we've got some more of the sunflower. Now I have just gone through my bag and I've got loads of different types of sunflowers in there, but I'll probably save those until April. So out of that bunch, we are going to sow the peas in the ground today. And then I am going to sow a few little cell trays of the melons, but we're going to take them home so that we can keep them nice and warm. So come on, let's have a go at building a little pea frame. So if you remember back in the winter time, we gave the pear tree a real good prune back. And this is all the pruning material back then. So I've kept this dry in the shed and um, I was hoping that it was gonna come in useful. And it certainly has, because I think these will make perfect little pea sticks. So all I've done is I've created a little hedgerow near enough using the prunings. And all I'm gonna do is sow the peas in between these branches, probably about two inches deep, two to three inches apart. And I do like to go a little bit extra when sowing my peas because it's bound to get found by some mice or maybe some rats or something like that. So plant one for you and then one for the little mice as well. Now, this is a variety called Oscar. And I'm only gonna do one variety in this bed and see how we go. And it's a dwarf variety. I believe it grows, was it 45 centimeters? No, this one's 75 centimeters tall. So it's not a really tall plant. But the reason why I've picked this bed is because it does get quite a bit of shade. And I know that peas can tolerate quite a bit of shade. So they don't like it too hot and dry. So I'm hoping that this bed should be perfect for them. Some people do like to soak their peas before they plant them out, just to make sure that they are gonna germinate. And all you need to do is just soak some paper towels and wrap them up and keep them in the fridge just for a couple of days. 
And as soon as you see those little rootlets start to come out the bottom of the peas, you can then go and start planting them out in your garden. Now I did think about using some of my raspberry canes, but I did think that they might start to take root. And I don't fancy dealing with raspberry runners in this bed. So if you've never grown peas before, or you've ever grown beans, you might think that they might be similar, but they're really not. So a bean plant will wrap themselves around the support. So a bamboo cane is absolutely fine. However, peas are a little bit different in that they send off little tendrils to pull themselves up the plant. So they need a little bit more things to grab on, which is why I've used all of this twiggy material. Now, whatever you do, when you are planting these, try not to drop any, because if you do leave some out on the soil level or on the paths, a little ratty or little mousy comes along, they're gonna know that they're around and they'll probably then start digging. So try not to drop them around the plot. We'll just give these a good old soaking, just to make sure that we start that process off of germination. And hopefully as that soil warms up, it'll soon start to sprout. Next up, we're gonna sow the melons. Now these are gonna come home with us and I am thinking about popping them into the airing cupboard because they do need something around 20, 25 degrees to start germinating. Now the only problem is, is you really must keep an eye on them because as soon as they start to sprout, they must have some light. You don't need grow lights, especially. You can then just pop them onto a really sunny windowsill and they should come along absolutely fine. So we're just gonna sow two of these per little cell tray here and then as they grow I will then pinch out the weaker seedling. As with most exotic plants you don't get many seeds so I don't think we're going to make two per cell tray but we'll see how many we do get and I am just going to plant them on their side. Now with most cucurbit seeds so it's a squash, pumpkins, cucumbers they're quite flat so I tend to put them on their side just to reduce the surface area because they can start to rot in the soil before they get going. So I've given them a light covering of some compost. I'll give them a water and then these are coming home with us. So right in the center of the frame, you can see that mass and in there, is all of the frog spawn. So just look at it all. So it won't be too long. And this pond should be full of loads of little tadpoles. And then we've got this blob here, and this is in my first pond, which is quite small. And we don't normally get much frog spawn in here. And just deeper in the water there, you can see we've got another great big blob of it as well. The only problem is when they do lay it and it's above the water level, if we do get a frost, it can damage it this pond is only really now getting started we get so much wildlife in here from dragonflies newts frogs all sorts so if you do like that sort of content guys do subscribe because i give lots of updates from all three of my ponds We're just behind the shed and if you remember back in the autumn we gave this a bit of a clear out but I must admit there's a lot of weeds already starting to grow so I do like to focus on the rest of the plot before I start focusing on new flower areas but what we're going to do is we're just digging a hole here because in a minute we're going to go and dig up the pear tree from down at the other end of the plot and I want to have a hole ready for it to go into straight away. So I'm just going to dig this hole as deep and as wide as possible so that I can keep as much root on the tree. So 
So March is probably not the best month to be transplanting your trees. You really want to be doing it when it's in its dormant phase, which is normally between sort of November and February. But this pear tree hasn't come into leaf yet, so I'm hoping it should be okay down here. So this here, amongst all the grass, I really must get in here and give this a really good weed, is the pear tree. And it's never fruited. It's been here for about three or four years and it's never really grown. So we're going to try and transplant it today. So I'm going to dig around it about a foot and see what the roots are doing underneath. So as you can see, for a four year old tree, that is a pretty poor rootstock. But come on, let's go and pop this in the other hole. And this tree, we've well, got quite a healthy rootstock, but you would expect something quite a bit bigger on a four, four year old tree. However, you can see all of the fibrous roots, and this is what's really important for any trees. They need a lot more fibrous roots than they do need really deep tap roots. So we're just going to bury this in the hole. I think I've got it wide enough, but it might be a little bit too deep. So when covering the tree back up, I have made sure that I've kept it at the same level from when I dug it up. And then we've just given it a really good watering in. So that was probably two gallons of water on that pear tree. And that will just help all of that soil settle around those roots and it will help settle that tree in. I found this old coir matting for inside hanging baskets and it's got really sort of old and I'm not going to use it anymore so I've just put it up here in one of the hanging baskets and that should be beautiful nesting material for some birdies. So the next job is to give this area a little bit of a weed. So this is where the pear tree was and it's a decorative flower area but I do find that the nigella, the grass and also the poached eggplant have really taken over. So I just want to give it a little bit of a weed so that we can give some of the other plants a little bit more space to grow. Down here is where we just dug up the old pear tree. And I wanna put a hydrangea in here instead because this is a flower garden and it's right near the top path. So a lot of people do come past here and I want a little bit more color and I absolutely adore a hydrangea. Now it's called blackberry, I think, blackberry pie. Um, and it's a bright purple one, it really is gorgeous. So we're just gonna dig a little hole in here and then we're gonna plant up the hydrangea. So you really want to be transplanting your sort of shrubs and perennial plants. Early spring is a really good time so that it's got a little bit of time to start putting those roots into the soil. So I'm just going to bury this up just at the same level as what it was in the pot and then we'll give this a real good watering in. So that is all we've got time for today, folks. Now it's just gone three o'clock. I was gonna stay up here a little bit longer and do the onions, but it does look like we're in for a wet week. So I don't wanna plant them out just yet because they are known to rot away. So we're gonna leave that until the soil warms up and we get a little bit of a dry spell. 
Now, I've taken you through some of the seeds that I'm going to be sowing in March, but I'm pretty sure there'll be some more that crop up along the way, especially when I start going to some more garden centres. Now, next weekend, hopefully, if we get some nice weather, I'm planning to do the March 2024 plot tour because there is so much going on down here from the rhubarb, the frog spawn and all the beautiful flowers that are now showing. So, yes, I'm going to do that next weekend. Now, I hope you've all had a lovely week wherever you are in the world, and I hope you have an even better week ahead of you. Now, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you all down here for another adventure down on the plot. So take care, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.